What is up everyone and welcome to FAQ 100! Oh. I cannot believe I've reached this milestone. 100 FAQs. And you might say, Ola, why 100 FAQs? I have no f***ing idea. I think the problem is that you continue to ask, frequently ask questions every FAQ. Hopefully you enjoy them. That's what it is. Thank you so much. We have a lot to cover in this FAQ, so let's get going with the first question. Pete Rogers. Hey Ola, after starting Solar Guitars, what was it like getting that very first one in your hands? Can you describe the experience? And although you go through many of them, do you have any Solar Guitars that you kept for yourself from the beginning? Thanks for the great content and congratulations on reaching FAQ 100. Thank you so much, Pete. The whole process of creating Solar Guitars basically took a full year before we actually had guitars in our hands. It was a very tedious process, you know, getting all the paperwork done and, you know, manage all the uh, starting of the company in, a, in another European country and all that, getting all that stuff together, you know, and just making everything right from the start. But then eventually we placed our first sample order. I think it was maybe uh, 20 guitars or something like that. I received all of them to my small apartment, which is very small. <laughs> there were boxes in the whole apartment and uh, me and Greg, Greg and I started Solo Guitars. We sat there trying out every guitar, checking out the different specs, what needs to be done, what needs to be fixed, if anything needed to be fixed, feature-wise. And I was sitting there with all these boxes and I was like, what the f*** am I doing? <laughs> Is anyone gonna even buy these guitars or not? I was so unsure, like... Am I doing a mistake? By creating solar guitars or like what? <laughs> am I stupid? So there was a lot of self-doubt when we launched the brand. We started selling guitars and people could have them one week after the, the launch of the brand. Which I think was a big part of the success of the start in that sense. And since then it's just been really well. I'm very happy and uh, today, obviously, creating solar guitars is one of the biggest things I've ever done. Something I'm incredibly proud about. And yes, I do still have a lot of those samples left, and uh, they're not going anywhere. Kenneth Carlson, favorite YouTube guitarist? I think the best YouTube guitar player is uh, Rick Graham, but my favorite one is probably Keith Merrow. Now, why? Because he makes music that I truly enjoy, which uh, not every YouTuber are making great music. He's one of the good ones for sure. So Keith Mara, there you go. Swedish Castle. The king is in there. The flag is up. The king is in there. Ross Clogley, in your career, what moment are you most proud of? What achievement has really hit the feels? Congrats, Ola. Okay, this goes a little bit in line with uh, what I said about solar guitars there, because obviously creating solar guitars is a very big, big, uh, thing in my career, something I'm very proud of. But, you know, since I started my YouTube career and, you know, going full on into YouTube, there's been so many things happening when my channel has been growing that I've been very proud about and just so many things that just happens. You know, I, I was asked to join Six Feet Under, I was asked to join The Haunted. I mean, those opportunities are insane for me and Still to this day, I'm very happy and proud about those moments. Artists acknowledging your work and, you know, getting comments from people that you admire. There's so many moments to think of. But I think that just being asked to join Six Feet Under and asked to join The Haunted, creating solo guitars, you know, putting out the Randall Satan and, you know, just being a part of the whole industry is something I'm very, very proud of. I'm, I feel very fortunate to be able to do this and be a part of this industry because, you know, it's my life, basically. So there you go, thank you. <laughs> oh, my ass. So you guys over there are like, hey, Ola, it's not your birthday. Why do you have so many gifts here? And, well, birthdays are awesome. But you know what's more awesome? The members on my YouTube channel. I received these gifts from my beautiful, beautiful YouTube members. You guys are the absolute best. So, as you can see, they are numbered, so I guess I'll have to start with number one. I don't even get these many gifts uh, on my birthday anymore, you know. It's just when you get old, you don't really care that much for birthdays and, and uh, gifts and whatnot. And, uh, oh, it's a box. Which means I have to get the box knife, okay. Great! Where is my box cutter? It's right in my hand now. 
It's in my right hand. Thank you, beautiful members. I love you. See you on Discord. Oh, what? Bean bustled or bean boozled jelly beans. Shit, okay, this is for all that tasting shit, I guess. What's this? Sweet bar. What's this? Bean boozled again. Oh, it's a game. I love games. Hot sauce challenge. Ooh. Uh, okay, I have to do that one video. Damn. Thank you so much, number one. Thank you. Dalton Rotiker. Dalton Rock 46. Hola, what is something you think everyone should experience in their lifetime? Congrats on 100. Here's to 100 more. Okay, I think everyone, at least once in their lifetime, need to try out a root beer. And seeing how people were so mad about me trying out root beer and saying that it sucked because it sucked it was the most awful thing i ever drank and people recommending me oh try this brand oh, try this brand oh, f me in my ass okay there it is so i'm gonna give it another shot this is boylan root beer and no i'm not sponsored by any brands this is just whatever i buy in the store you mother so i'm gonna try out this root beer per recommendation that this is supposed supposed Where's the supposed? Oh, the supposed is over there. <laughs> this root beer is supposed to be a lot better than the one I tried before. So here it is. Ola tasting root beer from Boylan. I don't have any expectations because I fucking hate root beer. It sucks. Okay, even by not drinking it, I was just smelling it. It smells exactly like my Colgate mouthwash that I have in the bathroom. Motherfucking. Why do you drink this? I would understand if you would clean your mouth with this bullshit and then spit it out, but no. This is... Ugh. I'm happy that I didn't bring my cart over here. I mean, this beer does not deserve the cart. Since I tried root beer before, this is not enough for an Ola tasting shit. Ola tasting shit. Ola tasting shit. Finally, FAQ 100, we're trying out Oscar Surströming. This is my dad and my brother. The handsome brother. Hi. This is Frederick, by the way. That's his name. Have you ever eaten sushi before? This is my first time. Huh? This is my first time too. Mm, I love it. Yeah, you're a lover. Every, every yeah. Day. So basically, this is fermented herring. herring. This can is, looks like it's about to explode. So we're just gonna open it up. Okay. I'm ready. No. Oh. Oh. Amazing. Oh, yeah. oh shh. Oh, that's, oh. It's okay. Oh, but, but the more you open it, it's... it's uh, shit. This is from uh, last year, by the way, and it's supposed to be better when it's from last year. And it's uh, overdue. That's where it is. What happens now? This is very typically, typically Swedish, by the way, to eat this bullshit. Oh, shit. Okay, so uh, right now you're, uh, you're fixing it? Yes. Can I have some paper? <laughs> yes. For my hand? Before I touch my hand. Oh, oh, I just scratched my nose. Oh, that was horrible. Oh, are you crying, Frederick? You're behind those glasses? No. Why, why does it come in waves? Oh, shit. So, who wants the first? Oh, I guess I have to. Okay. It's very salty. It doesn't taste. Yeah, it's not that bad, actually. No. Oh. 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 oh, my wine. Yeah. That's the first time for everything. Oh. It became worse. Oh, the flies like it. Yeah. Awesome. Mm. Great. <laughs> All that tasting shit. I hope you guys appreciate how far I go for you when I have to eat fish that tastes like, you know, balls dragged in garbage. Household garbage. Daryl Popham just started a YouTube channel. How do I get past the awkwardness in front of the camera? I mean, just do it, man. It's, uh, it's gonna be awkward. I mean, if you watch my first FAQ videos, they're really, really awkward. I would say that about 90% of my six string guitars are tuned to standard D. And uh, standard D is the tuning I use with the Haunted. But uh, the more I did them, 
and the more I talked in front of camera, the more I got used to it and got more comfortable in actually speaking towards the camera, even like speaking here with these people around me. It's okay. No one cares. I don't care. So it's all about just doing it. You're going to be fine. I promise you. What's up? Cameron Hart, hey Ola, any new products or music on the horizon? Would love to hear what you have in the pipeline next. See you in Gang Beasts. Thank you so much, I'll see you in Gang Beasts on Discord later. To be honest, I'm not sure what my next project is gonna be. I haven't really decided yet. I plan now after, you know, I'm done with vacation and my kids go back to school to go back into full riding mode. And we'll just have to see what happens. Uh, I'll do a couple of clinics and maybe I'll find some inspiration for doing a second uh, solo album or maybe do another feared album. And uh, maybe I think The Haunted are due to make another album. So we'll just have to see. I'm not sure yet. We'll just see what happens when I start riffing with my broken thumb. Okay, gift number two. This is a big box. It's probably something really cool in here. Can you see how excited I am? So my members sent me these gifts as kind of like a thank you for reaching FAQ 100. That's so nice of them, right? <gasps> what? Hola, it's dangerous to slay wasps alone. Take this. Congrats on 100 FAQs. You're beautiful, beautiful members. And these are all the members that uh, participated in this. Alan Skook and McKay, Emilia, Andrew Koloff, Stefan Jack Slade Lang, Tony Mr. Cotterberg, Thomas Altamo, Christina Herman, that's Thomas Altamo's wife, David Schmixius Pitzman, Robert the Editor, Sembersky, Mirka Semurk, Brandon Sills, Hans Werner Prince, Mike the Invoicerer, Eric Gray, Robin, Ben, Andre, Luigi Masella. <sighs> Is someone cutting onions in here? Planet Finesse. How do you feel about Slayer's retirement? I've seen them two times on their last tour. I think it's sad, but in some sense, I think it's fine too, because I think they've done... They've been putting out so many good albums out there that, you know, I'm very happy about it. And I've seen them a bunch of times live. And you know what? I'm fine with them retiring. I mean, they've been carrying the flag for a long, long time. And, you know, they have a lot to be proud of. And uh, come on, it's Slayer. They do whatever they want, and I would respect it. So there you go, Slayer, man. Slayer! You know, when you meet a guy on the street with a Slayer t-shirt, that's what you do. Moss Wall. I get the idea of panning one guitar left and one to the right as long as they play the same riff. But how is your philosophy when the guitars are playing different things? Say one is chugging on some basic chords and the other one is doing something more melodic, but not lead. Now this is something I truly enjoy about uh, double tracking is that when you have totally different parts on the left and right side, it can open so many possibilities and it can be so dynamic sounding. And I have one of these sections in uh, the song Brute Force, the haunted song Brute Force. With brute force. Doesn't that sound super awesome like that? I mean, it's so much better than just trying to, you know, make the same on each side and, you know, quad rack, track and all that. It just sounds a lot cooler and more hardcore, I would say. Ghostman 1846. Where do you see yourself in the guitar world in five years? Keep up the great content. Master of the Universe is my favorite album now. You guys are just kissing my ass. I love it, by the way. In five years, I think that I have probably not changed that much. If I look back five years, looking what I did, I'm basically doing the same, I think. You know, I'm very happy where I'm at right now and very satisfied with what I'm doing on YouTube, what I'm doing with solo guitars and with my bands. And it's just, that's my life right here, just trying to balance things out. I obviously have plans that I'm not gonna tell you about, but in the bigger picture, I'm probably gonna still do the exact same bullshit as I'm doing. Probably work out a couple of new video series. I mean, will it chug? Will it hug? Will it mug? I, and hopefully I'll play some more guitar and become better. But I doubt it. Steve Walsh. How are you from Ireland? What is the one thing you regret not doing sooner in life? I mean, first of all, I don't think I have any regrets, zero regrets at all about my decisions in life because whenever I made a decision that was wrong, 
something might have happened, but I learned from that mistake and that has made me the person that I am today. If you're supposed to learn anything from life, I think it's very important to actually make mistakes here and there. Pick up yourself and move on. I think that's a very important process in life where you learn how you react to something and you learn more about yourself and become more of a human being that's more true to yourself and in that sense also makes you know what you want to do in life like that Jyotish Mani what motivates you to share your music and play in front of an audience? oh that's easy, money <laughs> when we start as teenagers and you know start venturing and, and uh, write music Obviously, you want uh, people to hear it and people to appreciate it. And, you know, when you're insecure about something and you write something and you're like, oh, I hope people are going to like it, and you play your music to people and they like it, that's a very uplifting feeling right there. And it makes you so happy and relieved that people don't think that your music is bullshit. So that alone is inspiration enough for me to continue make music because I know there are people out there that enjoy it. Playing in front of an audience, that's just a bonus right there, I think. Box number three. God damn it, this is a big one. Is this a guitar? I hope. Okay. <gasps> what? It's, <laughs> it's a sword. Wow. Oh shit, in my face. Oh. Oh my god. <laughs> it's a sword. Um, ah, oh, maybe this is to fend off my fans, you know. Ha! Leave me alone. Ha! No selfie for you. Ha! That's my members for you. They're really thinking about everything. Thank you so much. A sword. Exactly what I needed right now. Did I say that I love my YouTube members? I didn't, but I do love my YouTube members. They're fucking amazing. Thank you so much, guys. This is really awesome. Makes this old man's heart cry and later I'll stab myself to death with this sword. Sword mount? Oh, okay. <laughs> sword mount. Oh shit. You know, you can't go buy swords to people. I mean, I have kids. Shit. Oh. Yeah, I guess that's it. I got a sword now. I think it's the first weapon I ever owned. What do I do with it? I'm so slow, it's for the wasp, apparently. Damn it, I'm slow. Thank you so much, guys. Just remember to pay. <laughs> you guys are the best. Thank you so much, you're awesome. Alan Harrison, any tips for someone about to go on a six-week tour for the first time? Okay, for touring, there are a couple of very important things that you need to bring on tour. One, wet wipes. Why? Because when you're on tour, you have no idea if you have time or if there's even a shower at the venue or somewhere or if there's time enough for you to take a shower between shows or between driving around or whatever so a wet wipe is great for just cleaning off your your uh, dirty parts down there, work it a little bit down there, okay? I can see it, it needs a little bit more work like this just don't do it in five minutes because uh, then it's sexual, okay? And people might not appreciate that when you're in a van, you know, cleaning yourself for five minutes. Second thing that's very important is to bring socks and underwear. T-shirts, fine. You know, I can go days with the same T-shirts being all disgusting and shit. But underwear and socks, it's nice to have clean ones. I know a lot of people that are touring, they buy socks, they buy underwear and they throw them away after they use them. Which is not really environmental friendly now, is it? So, bring your underwear. Bring socks, clean them, okay? Go to a laundromat or whatever and clean them. Or if you're at the hotel or by a river, just clean them in the river, okay? So there you go. Two really good tips for you right there. Kai Bittner, do you like your own music? Excellent question, actually. I think I do like my music because when I write it, I like it. But after you've been mixing and recording it and, you know, you listen to the songs a thousand times, it's really hard to like your own material. You just have to trust yourself that initial feeling you got when you wrote it, you know, is the, what people are gonna get when they first listen to the song. So you still have to maintain some sort of a belief in your material 
even though you totally hate the songs and you cannot listen to the album anymore. That's how it is with a lot of my albums. I just cannot listen to them anymore because I've listened to them so many times. That's just part of the process of being a creative artist, I guess. So there you go, Kai Bittner. Sal Meher Horni. Ola, do you ever worry that you'll become so big you can't be as close to your fans, members in the future? Thanks for all the great content over the years. I've actually already gotten to that point where, you know, I just couldn't keep up with all the Facebook messages and all the emails that I received. And, you know, back in the day, that was very important for me to be able to answer everyone because I wanted to help people, you know, with gear questions and, uh, pr you know, production questions and all that. Because that's how I can, like, grow my channel and grow my 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 name all England because I helped a lot of people on Andy Sneep forum you know just being the helpful guy and right now I just cannot handle all the ways that people are communicating with me I mean there's messenger there's uh, Facebook messenger there's uh, WhatsApp there's email there's Instagram I mean people can send me a message through a lot of different platforms and it's really hard to keep up so it's actually kind of sad I've come to this point where I'm not as close to you know, all my followers. But then again, now I have my YouTube membership thing in Discord, and it has brought me a lot closer, you know, to my closest fans, which I'm very, very happy about because I never really had that community feeling that I always wanted, you know, with the people that actually really, really enjoy what I'm doing. So that's what I created with the Discord and the YouTube membership thing. It's basically just, you know, how it was back in the Andy Sneep forum, where everyone was helping everyone out, there weren't any assholes, it was just a really good, helpful community. And that's what's happening with the Discord right here. And it makes me really proud to see this helpful environment and how people are so awesome, coming together, sharing an interest for guitar playing, metal, but from all across the world, we all come together and have a great time. We play Quake, we just voice chat or whatever and just have a really good time. So in that sense, right now, I'm way closer to my fans than I was back in the day and it's still manageable. Oh, there's a fly in my face. Brent Bednors, Ola, what's your favorite Steve Vai song? Team Cart. Favorite Steve Vai song, I think... But Horsey might be a top contender, mainly because it's his heaviest song, I guess. And I remember hearing that first. It was just so goddamn heavy. But uh, then again, Passion and Warfare is probably my my favorite Steve I album. Actually, the song Answers. It's such an uplifting song and very motivational. It's, it's a happy song. The leads in that one is so so very very happy and uh and uh positive it's positive ola that's what it is mark mellard special edition of master of the universe using only the miku pedal that's an excellent idea let me put that on real quick sick Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. FAQ 100. I really hope that I can keep this segment going for at least another 100 episodes. That's two more years, I guess. <coughs> oh, shit. That's the first burp for this FAQ. Great. I know I'm not saying this enough, but you guys are f awesome. I love you guys. You make me extremely proud. You're the best. I cannot stress this enough, but my followers are the f best. Thank you so much, guys. I love you. Okay? See you next time. FAQ 101. It's gonna be at least half as boring as this one. Uh,